Gloves and Gloves here, and today we're going to talk about, in the digital audio basics, we're going to talk about the Nyquist theorem. Why is this important? Well, the Nyquist theorem is super important because it allows us to understand sample sample rate, and it also allows us, allows us to understand bit depth. So what the Nyquist theorem is, is it was invented by this guy. This guy's named Nyquist. He used to work for AT&T uh, way back when, back in the day, and he, he came up with this theorem that if you could band limit a signal. So... We know that analog can record an infinite signal because it's infinite in nature. But we don't need an infinite signal because we can only hear a certain range. So we can chop off everything above 20 uh, kilohertz and everything below 20 hertz and we'd be totally fine. And so this allowed the this allows us, the fact that we can do that and that's all we need, allows us to digitally sample a signal and recreate everything our ear can hear accurately. Um, he created this theory that about this and then later on another person and actually back it up a little bit this was actually developed by multiple people at the same time if you go to russia it's a different sorry his name starts with a k and i believe there were two guys in germany most of the world calls it the nyquist theorem but a few people call it something else i believe nyquist was from sweden fun fact so anyways what was his theory why does it matter to us well this first of all allows us it allows digital sampling as we know it to take place and when you get into other types of converters, things start getting really, it starts getting really weird. But what you need to know is this has been proved. So when I say stuff, if you want the proof, just go look up the theory. You'll run into tons of math. Kudos to you for trying to learn all this math. So let's talk about this. Why does it, so first statement is when you increase your sample rate, it increases your frequency range for recording. Uh, so why is that? It does not increase your quality. People are going to like think that 192 sample rate is going to increase your quality. It will not. We'll talk about sample rate in a future video. So the Nyquist theorem states this. We have a signal, right? Oh, my marker's dying on me. Hopefully you can see some sort of a signal there. And it's just a drawing. And we need to represent it. Well, if it's been band limited correctly, this means that this signal is allowed in our chain, but a signal like this is not allowed in our chain. Why? Because we've band limited it. That signal doesn't exist in our area that we've band limited, so it can't be there. So when we tell our system, uh, so what we could do is we could say, hey, if we sample it two times within a cycle, there's only one option where there's two points. There's one frequency that crosses those two points. No other frequency does it. So if we had like a point there and there, there's only one frequency in our band limited signal that can cross those two points. Any other thing that crosses that would have to oscillate faster and would therefore be uh, not allowed in our signal. And so that that's uh, that's pretty much the theory right there. Now, <laughs> That's not the theory right there. That's not even close to the whole theory. But anyways, that's the big one. So as long as you get two points in before the cycle repeats, uh, you will recreate that signal accurately. The point at which you do not have two signals is called the Nyquist frequency. And it's different depending on how you've band limited your signal, which is why higher sample rates can make up impact uh, because of anti-aliasing filters and things we'll talk about later. So... We have our, our signal coming in and we're sampling it at least twice per rate and it will only give us one result. And it can actually extrapolate the phase and the and the amplitude of the signal from these points. Now there's a one caveat is this has to take place at a consistent rate. If it takes place at an inconsistent rate, it will not be able to do its job and it will fall apart. So that's something you need to be aware of. I feel like I need to prove some of these things, but I'm not like equipped right now to... E like it would just take a lot of work. I'm I'm telling you this mostly as one producer to another producer, so that you know what stuff does. I've read books where they've explained it, and it's I'd recommend doing the same thing. One day I'll probably have an advanced digital audio series where I'll cover things piece by piece by piece by piece. But anyways, you need to know that this signal cannot be in our in our thing. It violates the rules of our game. It requires more sample points because our sample points to represent this signal. You can't even see that, but they have to be a lot closer together to get within one cycle. So therefore, they take more sample rates. So if we had a whole bunch of additional sample points on our waveform here that fell out of order somehow, that then this would be interpolated in there. Now, if a frequency, 
So now we understand this thing between, okay, so if I get two points within a certain amount of time, there's only one result. There's one result. And so as long as I band limit my frequency, there's one result for every possible series of points that can be recorded. And when you uh, when we get into sampling and sample and bit depth, this will make a lot more sense to you. When we get into converter types, I think it will make even more sense to you. This is uh, a little bit crazy at the beginning. Um, but anyways, hopefully it's making sense right now. You probably have some questions about, well, understanding how signal sum is really important in this. So when, when we put that in there, when we put that high frequency stuff in there, the waveform will have different sample points at different rates because we're, we're, we're sampling it at a rate that will allow these waveforms to exist. I'm trying, I'm saying this stuff again, because I just feel like people will understand if I keep saying it, but if you're sampling it at a consistent rate and that frequency is allowed in there are, that means that there will be enough samples per cycle. There will be at least two for this to be represented, this higher frequency content is because it's oscillating a lot faster. Again, I'm, I'm banking on you. I've watched my sound and synth basics courses course. So then it will be allowed in there. If it's not, then it will only have one point. Now, what, what about this stuff that's of one point? Well, if it's only got one point, we filter it out. It's not allowed in our signal chain. If it is allowed, it's going to alias back in. And we'll talk about aliasing in another video. But if it's only got one point in a cycle, there's nothing for us to compare it against with time and stuff. So we just simply can't represent it in our system. And that's one of the rules of our game here is we have to filter it out. Now, We've chosen a sample at a rate for CD, whoop, just shook the table, for CD quality at 44.1K, uh, kilohertz, so 44,100 times a second. We've chosen that number very deliberately because at 20 hertz is the lower end and at 20 kilohertz is the upper end. So that means that if we sample at that rate, we'll have at least two points for every frequency the human ear can hear. Now, if we sample, now what about the stuff above all that that we're sampling? Well, we filter that out using something called an anti-aliasing filter. That way it doesn't sneak back into our signal and that way we just take care of it. Now we now it's gone and we don't need to worry about it. Filters are another topic for another day. But that's the basics of it. So to recap, Nyquist, frequent, Nyquist theorem states we will ban limit our signal. If we ban limit it, then only a, a finite possibility can come out. We will sample at least twice per waveform. If we do this and we do it at a consistent rate, there is only one possible outcome, amplitude, phase, and frequency rise that will pop out. So we can perfectly recreate any signal using these rules. And we must filter out anything above half our sampling rate, which just means anything that only has one sample point per waveform because it will alias back in, which is not cool. We don't want alias frequencies. If you do this, you will get perfect recordings and it will perfectly represent your material. Now the issues come up because you might be saying, well, this is fine dandy. Why don't I have perfect recordings? And actually you, you may have very close because systems today have gotten so good, but the issues come in the conversion. They come in the, how the analog components work. The theory, the theorem actually now, the theorem is perfect. They've proved it mathematically. Like it, this works. There's literally, there's nothing else that can be done. It will do, it'll do its job if you follow these rules. So if you run into problems, it's going to be with the analog side of things, which we're going to talk about. But next on, we're going to move on to uh, sampling rate and bit depth here in the next few videos and get you acquainted with those terms. But now you understand. Now you get it. Having more, because it's going to interpolate. We're gonna, when we talk about samples, we're going to talk about the space between samples, but it's going to interpolate. So in, increasing your sample rate, increasing the amount of samples we have, will just simply give us more samples on a waveform that we already knew existed there. We do not need more samples to represent it perfectly. If we were sampling 100 hertz, we would need to make sure we have two samples. So we would need to sample at 200 hertz and then filter out everything above 100 hertz. And we would be able to accurately, re accurately represent signals from 0 hertz to 100 hertz. We would, increasing our sample rate to 50,000 uh, kilohertz would not help us represent 100 hertz any more accurately. And so if we follow all of our rules that we've mentioned. Now, of course, there are creative solutions because of the analog side of things. And uh, this is obviously a much deeper topic than what I'm giving you right now. But hopefully I've done justice and you have walked away understanding the Nyquist theorem, some of the rules that apply to it and why the, sam the whole sample rate thing that I keep saying, which we're going to talk about in the sample rate video. So if you have any questions, let me know. 
subscribe, and have a blessed day. Opposing worlds. Reversing.